All right, welcome back everyone, I'm Nick. Uh, we've been doing a lot of really basic, easy things so far in this course, but now it's time to start getting more advanced. And so before we move forward, I want you to stop and take note that this video and the next two videos are possibly the most important videos in the whole bootcamp. And that's because all three of these videos deal with aligning objects on the screen. Now this is where a lot of beginners start to get stuck. So I really can't stress enough how important these three videos are and how important it is to really understand what we're talking about. And in this video, we're gonna talk about frames. Now, every single object that you add to the screen has a frame by default. And a frame is just the rectangular area that the object is in. So it sounds really simple, but a lot of beginners get tripped up here. And that's because frames by default are clear. We can't actually see them unless we click on them or we add a background color. So I'm gonna show you guys how we can customize frames. We can change their size as well as their alignment. And then I'm gonna show you guys also how we can debug our frames so that we can make sure our frames are always exactly in line where we want them to be. And I just wanna reiterate one more time that frames are so extremely important in our app because every single object that we add to the screen, whether it's an image or a shape or a text or a list, it has a frame and we can customize it by changing its frame, changing its frame size, as well as its alignment. So it's super important to get comfortable and a full understanding on how frames work. So once again, I am back in our Xcode project and let's create a new file for this video. So right click on the navigator, new file. It's going to be a Swift UI view. And this time we're discussing frames. So let's call it frame bootcamp. Click resume on the canvas so it all connects. And I'm just going to hide these panels on the right and the left here so we can make the screen a little bit bigger. So every time you add any kind of element, whether it's a text, an image, a shape to the screen, it has a frame. So when I click on this text, we can see the frame on the preview and that's that little blue line that highlights below it. And just to outline where this frame is, I'm gonna give it a background color. So let's call it dot background and let's just add color dot red. And by default, the frame is gonna to size to as small as the content. So right now it's right as the edges of the content. And if we added more content, hello again, uh, the frame you'll see automatically resize with the content. But we can also set frame sizes ourselves. And we've done this in this course, so we can call it dot .frame. And there are two main completions. There's this one with a width and a height and then this longer one with a min ideal max, but we're gonna do that one later. So let's just start with the regular width and height. Click enter on that, and I'm gonna give this a frame of 100 by 100 with an alignment of center. And you can see now that even though the text only says hello world and we didn't change uh, what text is in here, and you can see how the red is now a bit bigger. Uh, one thing to note though is that we can stack backgrounds and frames on top of each other. So when you start making views, you're going to have a ton of items on top of each other. You're going to have pictures and layers and backgrounds. And, and once you start getting into those more complex views, it's going to be crucially important to understand how these frames work. So before we add this 100 and 100 frame, I'm going to add the background again just on the text. So here I'll call dot background and we'll do color dot green. So you can see here the separation of the text right now with just a background. And then on top of that, we add a frame with 100 and 100. And on top of that 100 and 100 frame, we have another background with red. And this is important just to understand how we can stack and layer these frames and backgrounds. And and now I just want to make this frame. Let's make this 300 by 300. And we can then look at the alignment. So the alignment is going to obviously align the content within the frame. So right now this frame is red, but the content in the frame is the text 
and this background above it. So the stuff before the frame is the content that's inside the frame. So right now the hello world and the background green are aligning to the center and we can see that uh, in the preview. But we could change this alignment if we wanted to align it to the left side we could do leading, we could do top leading. And this is really important as you start making more dynamic and complex uh, views. So let's put this back to center and I'm going to comment out this red and this frame here just to get back to the default hello world. Now in one of our first videos we talked about how to align text to the left and the solution for when it's just one line is to create the frame and then do aligning. So if I added this frame back and alignment to leading we can now take that text and push it to the left. This is great but of course the frame is still being limited to our 300 by 300. What if I wanted to push it all the way to the left as far as it could go? The solution there is to set the frame instead of these hard-coded numbers of 300 and 300. We can call dot frame and this time we'll use the other completion. And this completion has a min width, ideal width, max width, min ideal and max height. And they function exactly how you would expect. Uh, if you set the min width to 10, the width would never be smaller than 10. If you set the max width to 100, it would never be wider than 100. Uh, and there's a ton of combinations that we can do with this. But for right now, I just want to look at the max width. So I'm going to delete all these other parameters here. So let's delete this. I'm going to delete the rest of this as well. And let's keep just the alignment. We are now setting the frame to a maximum width of infinity. And infinity just means as big as possible within the parent frame. So when I click on this, we can see that the frame is now as big as possible. And if I want to show that a little more, let's put that background color back. And now you can see that the frame is infinity. And again, we can set the alignment on this frame to leading. And that's how we can set uh, the text or whatever element or whatever content all the way to the left side. Now we can do the same thing with the max height which we deleted before but I can type that back in max height and we can call it dot infinity add a comma and now the height is as big as possible and we can align this to the top maybe so the hello world's at the top. We can revert it back to the center and so setting the frame probably seems pretty simple and you're probably thinking that it didn't need its own video, but I really wanted to dive into this uh, because every single element, whether it's a text, whether it's an image, whether it's a shape, no matter what it is, it has a frame and we can manipulate those frames. So it's very, very important. So just to highlight what we've gone over, I'm gonna delete this all one more time. We have our hello world. And let's add a background of color dot red here. Let's set another frame. Let's do frame. Let's do height of uh, 100. And then let's set another background color on top of that frame. So color dot uh, orange. So you can see how that's growing. And we can do another frame. And this time we'll do width. And we'll do maybe uh, 150. And let's add a background on top of that background color dot purple. And then we can do another frame frame. Let's this time let's do the uh, max width. We'll do max width of infinity and we'll set a background on that. We'll do color dot pink. And then maybe we'll do another frame. We can do height of 400. And we can and we can then set another background. We'll do color dot green. And one more we'll do frame. And this time we'll do max height of infinity. And then we'll set the background here to color dot yellow. So this is not typical code that you would do in your app, but I really want to highlight how we can stack and build frames on top of each other 
to get a really cool effect. For example, we have this green box here, which you can see is this color. But what if we wanted to get this green box to be at the top of the parent frame? Well, we can go to this frame, which is color yellow. And if you remember, all of the frames have an alignment. So by default, the alignments are center. But if we change that alignment to top, we can now really customize uh, how we want this to look. So what we can do again here, this purple, this pink one, maybe we wanted this purple content to be all the way to the left side. So we can go find where this pink is, it's this one, and the frame for this pink is this infinity here. We can set the alignment to leading. And now it's pushed up. And we can do the same thing, so maybe we want this hello world to be the top of this orange. So we find the orange layer here, and it's and the frame is this hundred, so let's do dot alignment dot top. So there are infinite combinations of things you can do with all of this. And if you ever get stuck and trying to debug your code and you're trying to figure out why things are not lining up, chances are you'll be able to figure it out if you just added a background color to all of your frames and look at where all your frames are lining up. So I would never have an app with these colors, but while I'm developing, I would probably throw all these colors in just so I can see uh, the frames and fix my layouts accordingly. So that's it for this video. I know it was kind of boring, but frames are crucially, crucially important. So I hope you guys learned something here. And as always, I'm Nick, this is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.